How's everyone doing? All right. How about yourself? Not bad. Happy to catch this earlier in the week as opposed to on a Friday. I hope the time hasn't resulted inconvenient to others. Yeah, I think uh, John's not going to be able to make it at least this week. Uh, Meadows. Oh, bummer. I believe I did see him respond to the poll. No, he did not, actually. Do you have a sense if he's going to be able to make it moving forward or need to go back to Fridays for John? Um, I think it should be okay. I mean, I would double check with him, but I know he, I, I think he just was like, hey, this week it's just, you know, I, uh, he, all of his meetings were already set up, but um, I can follow back up with him. Yeah, when okay. I chatted with him last week, uh, he's he seemed he seemed. I mean, he was the one who made this calendar invite for me. Uh, <laughs> that's how that's how responsible I am. Um, he he seemed like he was he was willing to to make these as long as he had the invite in his agenda. Okay. So. Well, we'll we'll sort that out. Cool. I I wasn't part of the of the kickoff meeting. I was part of of last week. Uh, following up from where we left off. We wanted to converge with the rest of folks uh, who have been working in the space. Uh, there are people like Dan and Priya on the call. Uh, I actually, yeah, Priya is here. We're down a, a good road. And we thought it'd be beneficial to compare notes, uh, see what they've been working on, uh, hear from them. How far along are they? What areas are they, they needing help with? and for us to evaluate uh, collaborating and contributing with them so we can accelerate this work. With that, uh, Priya, uh, I believe you have uh, prepared some material and want to give us an overview. I'll pass yeah, it on to you. Thank you. Um, I have some slides. Let me share my screen. Sorry, <laughs> quit on me. No dramas, don't worry. Cool. You're seeing your screen now. Awesome, 100%. Okay, cool. Hi, everyone. Uh, yeah, my name is Priya. I work with Dan on the Google source, open source security team. And yeah, this is just a reference architecture proposal that um, we've been working on. And yeah, I'm just going to give you a quick overview of it. So a lot of this, um, these slides are based off this doc that Dan wrote called Zero Trust Supply Chains, which I have linked in the bottom. I'll share the slides after. Um, and so if you haven't read the doc already, I would definitely recommend reading it because it'll go into a lot more detail about all the stuff I'm going to talk about today. Uh, but I'll just give a quick overview of the doc through the next few slides. So basically, the doc covers how we use a few different tools to create a secure supply chain. And the tools we're focusing on are Spiffy Inspire, Six Store, and Tecton. So uh, Spiffy Inspire will use to perform node and workload at a station. Uh, Six Store is a project that I've been working on for the last months. It actually consists of three different tools. So full CO is our root certificate authority, record is a transparency log, and cosign is a container signing tool, which basically um, makes it easier to sign and verify containers. And we're using Tecton as our example build system today. 
Um, Tecton Pipelines is just a CIC to CD system based in Kubernetes and Tecton Chains as well, which basically provides supply chain security for Tecton Pipelines. Um, I'll discuss each of these more uh, in more detail um, as we go through the presentation. So quick caveat before I get into it. Um, there are a lot of different options for each of the tools that I'm going to be talking about and a lot of different things can be plugged in and we're definitely not set on these. Um, this is kind of more just an example of one way this could be done, but if anyone has other opinions or ideas, we're super welcome to hearing them. Cool. So I'll start just by talking about Tecton Chains first. So. Uh, like I mentioned before, Pipelines is a CICD system based in Kubernetes. And so you basically do whatever you would do with your normal CICD system. Like maybe you're building an image or you're building a binary. And so you'd use uh, Pipelines to basically just do that, but in Kubernetes. And the way Tecton Chains works is it watches Pipelines. It watches all the things you're trying to build and waits for something that it recognizes to pop up. So that could be an image or maybe a task run and it'll wait for an artifact that it understands to come up and it'll sign it for you with some like key that you have set up and um, it'll also generate attestations in a few different formats and yeah and so we basically use chains to sign um, artifacts coming out of pipelines so why is this useful so how do we really know what has happened in a build um, a lot of times we don't really like we have a build process that does something and it tells us that it happened and we're like okay like that sounds legit um and we kind of just have to take take its word for it and so chains makes this a little bit better um because chains is actually watching the build process um we can kind of observe what's happening and when we see that something we expect has happened we can sign it and verify it later on so that sounds pretty good right um, the problem is that we're not really watching the build process itself. We're watching Kubernetes where the build process is running. And the thing about Kubernetes is that um, the problem with this is that in Kubernetes, anyone with the correct uh, RBAC permissions can actually go in and edit your pod or edit your task run. And so before chains, um, since chains relies on observing these things, to finish and tell chains what happened, um, it's not actually that secure. Um, a person could go in, change the pod, change the task run, um, say that something happened when it didn't or vice versa, and chains would kind of just believe it. And so it's, it's not actually completely secure. So this is where Spiffy and Spire come in into our entire chain. Um, so we can use Spiffy and Spire to kind of not have to rely on the Kubernetes control plane anymore. And we can use it to attest um, the node that something was running on and sign and verify output before anyone has the chance to change uh, the workload itself. So basically we use Spire to sign a workload before the pod completes. And then the Tecton Chains controller will verify that the workload was signed by Spire before accepting it and signing it again. Cool, so now we kind of have like this process, this system where everything is verified kind of from beginning to end. So we have Spire verifying the workload on the pod and then we have Chains verifying what Spire did and then signing it again. And then as a human, you can go ahead and you can verify um, that Chains actually signed whatever image or, or task you were trying to build. Cool, and then the final tool that we have kind of integrated into this is SigStore. So we use FullCO to provide certificates to help sign and verify code. We use Cosign to sign container images when they're, if they're built in Tecton pipelines. And we have Recore as well, which is a transparency log where all activity is stored so it can be monitored and uh, checked later if it needs to be. So I mentioned a lot of tools just now. Um, so we have this like diagram to kind of see how they all fit together. Um, I took this from Dan's doc. The diagram is also a little bit complicated. So stop me if you have any questions, but I'll do my best to try and explain it. Um, 
So we have on the left hand side our build system, which is Tecton and Tecton is going to create a task run, which is going to create whatever artifact you're trying to build, like say it's an image. Um, and then alongside Tecton, we have Tecton chains running, watching our task run, waiting for an artifact um, that it recognizes to be built so that it can go ahead and sign it. Um, meanwhile, Tecton, both the Tecton controller and Tecton chains are um, validating against the spiffy root, which is signing our workloads um, and our task run as it comes up in the Kubernetes cluster. So once a task run is complete, um, Spire will sign it and Tecton chains will validate that, um, that that happened correctly. And if that checks out, um, chains will create an attestation, request a certificate from Fulcio, and then you end up with signed artifacts and attestations for whatever um, you are trying to build in your, in your build. Um, and on the side, we kind of have this transparency log where, uh, where signatures can be stored and certificates. Pretty cool. Okay, I was gonna do a really simple demo um, to kind of illustrate some of these tools and how they work together. Uh, it's not like super complete, uh, but I think it'll get the point across. So uh, basically I'm gonna build an image in Tecton. Uh, it should be signed and validated uh, with Spire. And then uh, Tecton will validate that Spire actually signed the workload. Uh, and then Tecton Chains will again sign um, sign the image, we'll verify that the image was signed locally with cosine and show overall provenance as well. Okay, let's switch to my, my ID. Can everyone see this? Okay, cool. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is generate some keys that we're going to use that the Tecton Chains controller is going to use for signing. So this is going to generate an encrypted private key. So I'm going to enter in a password. And we have a public key, which we're going to use for verification at the end as well. Oh, and I'm just restarting um, my Tecton Chains controller because I don't really want to wait for the secret new secret to get mounted. Um, cool. So we have our uh, we have a Canico task which will run in Tecton, and basically all this is going to do is create like a really simple Docker file. It's just one line. Uh, build and push that Docker file, and then do some extra configuration stuff so that Tecton Chains will pick up the image. And we have our task run, which will hopefully build the image to this registry that I have. So we can apply the task first. And start our task run. I'm just going to take a few seconds just for everything to come up, but hopefully in the logs we should, cool. We can see the three different steps that we had. Actually, it looks like the second one is still continuing, but first we create the Docker file and you can see that, um, so, it, so you can see that uh, we actually did reach out to Spire when generating this workload um, and we kind of have one for each container that's running. And it looks like it's complete. And so we have this image now, which should be built and pushed. So at this point, uh, the Tecton change controller should have seen that an image was built and is going to pick it up and try to sign it now. So we can look the logs for that. So I apologize in advance, these logs are kind of ugly. <laughs> But if this all worked, then the first thing it'll do is it will have seen that a task run was complete. So it found this task run, which is like this big, long, awful um, chunk of text. Uh, scroll past that. And it'll sign it and store the payload on the task run itself as an annotation. And then next, it'll see that we actually, it'll And I'll put signature to the registry so it kind of sit with the image itself. So at this point, we should be able to verify that the image with our public key. So I'll do that with cosine. This will work. 
cool. Okay, so uh, the verification worked, which basically means that uh, Tecton Chains was able to sign the image and upload the signature um, with the keys that we had created earlier. And the last thing we want to do is verify provenance. And let me put in the name of the task code that we want to verify. So if we want to see what the actual task run looks like now, um, the completed task run looks like this. So we have the payload stored um, as a base 64 encoded annotation, the signature as well. Um, this um, annotation basically means that, um, that Spire signed the uh, workload and it was validated. This is actually not supposed to happen in Tecton pipelines. We plan on moving this to chains and have chains actually doing the validation itself, uh, but it's kind of just here for now. Um, it's definitely still a work in progress. And so we basically, we take the payload and the signature, uh, decode them with base 64. So we have our payload here and then verify with cosine against the same public key. And it looks like it worked, which is nice. So yeah, that's pretty much the demo. So um, there's a lot of different things I think we can do with this. Um, I think it would be really cool if we could use different build systems, not just Tecton, but maybe Jenkins. I think a demo for a realistic application um, would be much more useful for people than just building and pushing an image. Um, adding the Spire validation to chains is something that we plan on doing because um, it, it makes more sense to have it there. Um, having a few sample demos run in different languages, I think would be really useful for people. And um, also determining security pol policies that we can enforce while the build is running. So maybe um, running something like Falco at the same time as this build is happening um, would be a good idea as well. So yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it. I figure I'll open it up to discussion. Um, yeah, excited to hear everyone's ideas. This is, this is awesome. awesome. Go ahead, John. Uh, a question for you about the the Intoto layout. Is this like one per? task run and it's like kind of like a complete or is there a do you have thoughts yet about how to do uh multiple chains with one in total like in total root layout right now i think we're doing it one per task run um i haven't actually thought about your other option what were you what were you sorry could you say it again We're we're thinking about having multiple steps in the supply chain, and so like and trying to have one artifact at the end of those things. So if you're chaining together like uh, unit tests or integration tests with the build process itself, you might want to have all of those represented as a broader um, in total layout. But this is all new, new to me as well too, so I don't know if that makes sense or not. But that was how I was thinking about it. Got you. Yeah, right now we definitely do it one per task run. I don't know. I, I don't really know enough about Intoto to know if it is like meant to, if one attestation can be used to kind of like cover an entire chain of things or if you're meant to have one attestation for everything, but I could look into it. So, so there's also one thing uh, on terminology thing, we might not be saying the same word. Intoto has a concept of links and a concept of layouts. And then there's also a third concept called attestations, which are supposed to replace links. So it's kind of confusing. Um, yeah, I think you were talking about layouts, John, which are like chain links together and then enforce policy on them um, is my understanding of it. And then yeah, so I think the, the links and the attestations can easily be chained together, but they don't come with like a policy layer, which the layout would also give you. So it's kind of like overlapping Venn diagrams, I guess. John, does that answer your question? Is, there, is everybody yeah. so floored, floored by this demo as I am? I don't know. It's pretty amazing. Sorry to cut you off, John. Yeah, 
Yeah, I'm curious what impressions maybe we, we go around uh, Aditya. What does what does this impress upon you? Oh, I don't have any immediate thoughts at the moment. I thought it was a pretty cool starting point and we can build on top of this. I think it'll be I, I agree with the final slide there that it'd be cool to see this as uh, with a more real world example. But that's mostly what I had in mind. Cool. And, and remind me, you, you've been primarily working on, is it is it tough or is it in Toto? I get confused. Uh, it's, it's more in Toto, but I have not been as involved with the attestations work that uh, Dan just mentioned. I'm, I'm just kind of getting up to speed there. Cool. Uh, going down the list, Laurent. We'll skip Laurent. Uh, Gary Yang. Um, no kind of immediate uh, feedback. I was just playing with chains actually yesterday. So this is all still pretty new to me. Um, also, uh, as the mention of Spire was also, or Spiffy Spire, um, was also pretty interesting to me. But it seems like that's like kind of scoped to like the building of that image. Is that correct? Sorry, um, I think it. I think it would basically be used for any anything that any container that was like running as part of your pod. But I am not like a Spiffy Spire expert, so someone please jump in if that's not correct. That's fair. That's that's an accurate response. Okay. <laughs> All good. Uh, yeah, rather than doing the awkward thing going one by one, if, if anyone has has anything they want to say, like Michael. Yeah, uh, sure. Yeah, so yeah, uh, great demo. Um, I think the things that uh, we'd like to know more about if, if folks have thoughts on is, um, one is how sort of humans get involved somewhat in throughout the sort of chain of things, right? You might have out of band security reviews and you want people to attest to a, a security review or also, um, you know, even something like a manager approval for deployment. Like, yeah, we're good for deployment. You want to kind of have that also be part of um, the set of attestations. Uh, so that's something that I think we're interested in along with, uh, we'd love to be able to see, you know, in the future, you know, somewhat more of the, okay, now that it's gone through these attestations, here's how we're enforcing it in, um, production to ensure that the only things that are running are the artifacts that have, um, you know, we've, uh, the artifacts whose provenance has been sort of validated. Yeah, maybe I, I'll answer the human one. I think it's a great use case. Um, if you take a look at the in toto attestation, the in, I'll drop the link in here. It's in hyphen toto slash attestation repo. Um, uh, you see there's some early work in showing how that could happen. Um, there, there, there's a really good layering system in here that I like where um, there's a, it's called a subject and then the statement. And so uh, what Priya shows actually not an attestation, it's a provenance statement as part of like a larger attestation. And there are different types of statements that can be made. So instead of just what build steps ran, you could have a statement. I think there's an example here showing a code review or something like that where a human can make a statement. Um, and then the subject is actually what it references. So if you think of just containers or something simple where there's a SHA-256 hash, uh, you can start to join and build up like a giant graph of all of the statements made about an artifact um, and reference things that way. There's all sorts of cool giant graph QL style graph database things where if everybody was speaking the same language and referring to things by digest in the same way and making statements about it, you can start to imagine some really cool queries you can make. Yeah, awesome. This looks uh, really cool. Curious, how are you folks thinking around packaging this as a solution rather than, hey, here's a reference architecture. We've opinionately picked this parts uh, and leave it to people to bring up versus are you, are you considering instrumenting the deployment of this? And if so, what would be the order of operations? Like, yes, you have like a full CEO publicly available, like, 
presumably you have to bring Spire first. Like, are you taking care of that? Are you bootstrapping that Spire deployment, then running Tecton upon it? That's a good question. I guess like, I, I was thinking more like, it would be useful if we had like one central repository maybe where we have like a few different examples of like actual like real world ways people would want to use this and maybe just have all the config in there and then people can kind of like pick and choose like what they want to do and how, how they want to do it. Um, I don't really, I haven't thought about it enough to know if we can like have just like one way that we kind of like take care of everything for, for people and if that will even be useful for the majority of people. Right. Maybe path forward I saw it would be like, I'm just throwing this out as an idea, like just kind of start with what Priya had and just kind of nerd out on it. Like turn we, we've got a cluster set up and running and people can come play with it and then just like geek out and make it as secure and crazy over the top as possible and document all the protections you get and everything like that. And then step back and see if there are other ways, you know, instead of picking one, we're just kind of choosing one to start with, documenting all the cool stuff we can do and protections we've made and guarantees we can make, and then figure out, you know, make all that pluggable and have people jump in and show other ways to do the same thing. Because the more things we pick here, the harder it's going to be to say, you know, we say these are three things you can do to make a secure supply chain. That's one thing. If we say now you've got to use these 300 things and you can't choose any of them, it's a little bit more complicated. So we could figure out where the knobs are and where people want to switch With out different good components. I think yeah, the, the inherent is risk is examples. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just were you saying something? Yeah, the, the risk with that is today, a lot of these knobs are in configuration files, are, are not things that are programmatically say OIDC inspire. So it's, it's error prone. People are going to flip on the wrong thing or, or they're going to stumble on, on it. Like they're going to have followed the steps, but maybe they touched the wrong field or the wrong YAML somewhere. And uh, then they're going to be blocked in that. So I'd be curious, like if, around help wanted, if, if people would like to automate like the most basic mode of this and practice would, would also be extremely beneficial. There should be a getting started of some sort where it has, you know, again, these examples that are out of the box, right? But yeah, it should be where that's, again, the getting started where people can add um, their own kind of, you know, two cents to it. But I, we have to have a line in the sand of just example, like a one through two or three or whatever, because if it's, if it's something that's so nebulous, it's just not going to get adoption is, is my, is my take. Maybe a visualization or metaphor would help make sense. Uh, I'm imagining, so we got the huge CNCF landscape that everybody knows about and loves to make fun of where you zoom out and there's 10,000 tiles there. So like we're kind of drawing one line through that, like a map of like, if you pick these things and you and configure it this way, following this tutorial, you've got an awesome supply chain. And then for each of those, you know, there's 30 other things you can pick in the CNCF landscape and we can open it up and let people show how to swap out. You know, if you can't use Tecton for some reason, uh, these are other things you can do in other configurations to get you those same protections. But when we first drawn that first line all the way through that crazy landscape. Exactly. And then have issues be where if somebody needs to integrate with a, another solution or something of that ilk, then we should have those projects kind of help to, you know, if, if exactly. something r rises to the top, then we can go to other, other people to do it. But you agreed having that kind of initial kind of Rosetta Stone, I guess, right? So of the CNCF landscape. That's the word. That's the word. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and the Brooklyn, process we Brooklyn, might be able Brooklyn, to accelerate. Brooklyn education, Dan, Brooklyn education. So. Yeah. And the process we might be able to create first class support and fir first class integrations between those different projects, getting APIs for the different things. Now, the other thing to get super crisp on is going to be the ontology of it, because Spire has a concept of attestation that is different from the Intoto concept of, of attestation. Uh, is the same person in charge of both? Like, once you got the stuff running, is the person defining Spire at the station policies the same person defining the supply chain at the stations? Like, what's the what's the shared responsibility model and practice with with the person running the PKI and saying these are the set of of runners or executors in a pipeline that may may do a job and like they have to go through like. 
this machine must possess a, a virtual TPM and it must have been deployed in this availability zone and this namespace and like all, all the all the Linux introspection, do we expect the person to know these things to be the same person to to do inputs and layout files? Or these are typically different people and we, we want to create a model of like, well, you, you give this to this person and this thing to this other person. I don't think there's any canonical org shape of like who wears which hats. Um, it's like the personas question we always face of like, what are the all the possible unique personas? And then each organization is going to map them onto people differently, like a one person company, you got everyone with that same hat. Um, and, you know, two big companies have different dotted lines around who wears which hat. So yeah, maybe getting crisp on the personas first and then figuring out how to map them into an org chart would help. As you say, like those, those are blurry and, and often broken, like in one place, it may be a one person army in other places. It may be different teams, like whoever ends up running, it, it would be good if we, if we separate distinctions and we don't conflate terms and we just say like, these are different layers of abstraction. You have at the station at this level, which is not at, like conceptually it's it's accomplishing the same thing but it's mechanically done very different yeah i have one question on the provenance uh, in the demo right we are what is sure so once the image is produced the artifact is produced the provenance is uh, can be uh, verified only for the image or it we can verify that this image was produced by this particular task and we can verify that Right, or this pipeline. At yeah. The... So the provenance that I showed um, actually verifies the entire task run. So the payload is actually like everything in the task run. Um, so one of the image itself is like an output or a result in the task run itself. So you can verify that the image came from that task run because it is part of the payload. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, there were basically two verification steps. So first, I used the public key to actually verify the image itself, the signature on the image. And then I also right. used it to verify the um, signature on the entire task run. OK, yeah, I think uh, I think we had that uh, early earlier to uh, the discussion, right? That if this, that particular image had basically gone through some of the tests, like unit test and uh, what are all those things. Is there a way to also provide that attestation that, okay, this image was produced, it was run, uh, not at the task, but at the pipeline level, right? That it has gone through this pipeline with series of tasks. Yeah, so right now we have, we can generate like input attestations for an entire task run. And so you could have attestations for each one. And I'm sure we could add support for like creating it at the pipeline level, but right now we just don't have it. Like that's something okay. that would probably be really cool. Okay. Priya, are you developing this in the open or it's a, a private repo for the time being? Yeah, I could definitely add, add everyone to the, the project, to the cluster. If you want to mess around with it, feel free. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's very open. I think letting folks kind of play with it is probably the best bet from here. And then we can probably reconvene as a team and figure out, okay, let's divvy out some shit and, and start actually pounding on this. This is going to be some fun. This is super fun. I really appreciate the demo. It's awesome. For sure. This is a huge breakthrough. It, it actually realizes the stuff we've we've been talking for quite some time. Uh, mm -hmm. Dan Dan work uh, joked in chat saying, "Tell go tell the president to stop issuing executive orders while we're actually building secure supply chains." He <laughs> <laughs> <You> would. <laughs> But yeah, this this is really good. Like, what else would you draw folks' attention to, or like, other than what you put down in help wanted? What remains is like the biggest unresolved challenge for you. I feel like, well, for me, I'm. I guess I'm focused more on like the the smaller things day to day. Like, I'm just like focused on actually trying to get like Spire to work with chains and like trying to make. Oh, the demo itself was like a little bit hacky, right? And trying to like clean it all up is like more what I focus on. I feel like 
the I think the group is cool because then we can kind of like start attacking other areas if that makes sense um yeah beyond the help wanted I think like whatever people think is cool or like if they have any fun ideas like the cluster is available and like it would it would be cool to see what everyone comes up with yeah and let's also define like a an MVP, right? Like just to, because we can we can attack this as we are as engineers, literally for months. But we just got to figure out, okay, what is it? This is our line in the sand, everyone. This is what we want to kind of get out there as a basis, and then let let, let you know let it out in the wild and let people do do their thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So people yeah. decide that like this is the way they want to go. Like these are the tools we kind of want to go all in on. Then I think we could all work on like getting that super like cleaned up and having like a really defined like tutorial and getting started and like kind of having that as a starting point. But I think everyone should probably play around with it before they commit to anything. Do you have a name for the project? No, that's a great point. There totally should be. We just have like a code word or something. Vega. Does Vega work? Vega? <laughs> All right. it, it looks like there's a few other um, external projects that are in different states as well. Like the, the internal attestation stuff is like 0 0.1. Is it like maybe we can also help push these other projects over the finish line as well too to to get everything kind of to that probably not mv for mvp but should like reiterate the importance of moving these other projects in, in the right direction because some of them have moved historically kind of slow but john do you do you see an opportunity for kpac and build packs to play a role here That, that would definitely could be something that we plug into like the, the build process as a way to, to have that set of attestations generated automatically as well. Um, and I know we've chatted about that and, and we can work with those folks. Um, so yeah, that, that would be really cool. Yeah, that would be dope. Yeah, Priya, I, I know people didn't get a chance to introduce themselves and you might not, not know who you're talking to, but we have a pretty broad representation from different projects, different different companies. It's it's a really good bench of expertise for folks to pitch in and and contribute possibly plugins or extensions. I think the ultimate goal here is bootstrap an ecosystem and like people being able to sure they read the reference, but maybe we make this a modular thing and people can swap it for something else or or the okay. APIs for the automation and the instrumentation of the bring up of the of the entire supply chain. Definitely. Cool. Uh, Michael, what's City's perspective and Software Factory's uh, vantage point around of this? Uh, well, I think uh, I'll, I'll throw that over to, to Jonathan because he actually just joined. Um, because <laughs> I think he he has a still a better perspective uh, on that. Hello, John. How are you? Not too bad. Sorry, I feel like I've been on vacation, but it's like vacation in hell. I just haven't really surfaced from uh, from other work, but uh, so I've been tardy and, and not been able to join these calls. But uh, Anders, your your conversation is what city's perspective on supply chain or, or working with the projects. Or from the angle of, of software factories. So Priya shared the work that she's been doing, uh, working with Dan and Laurent on the call around taking Tecton, taking Spire, taking Six Door. Yeah. Actually, like it, it does is not like quite glued, but it's it's like nicely interoperating with with each other. Uh, yeah. I believe you have been following the paper. And we're discussing, well, there's there's some areas they're looking for help. There's also areas of opportunity to extend the solution or like take the solution as, as the reference architecture. Uh, I wonder whether within your within your idea of, of software factories, if like this helps manifest that or they're like parts it's not considering or like what's the opportunity cost of, of doing just this? 
Oh, to totally right. So, so unfortunately, I'm going to have to rebind and see the demo. I apologize, I missed it for you. But um, I have been following a lot of this work, right? And and I think it's absolutely spot on, right? The the, the way that um, I you know I suggest we look at it is looking at that high level architecture, figure out how it fits in, and, and see where any of the gaps are. But I think the technologies you're looking at and using are, are just tremendous, right? I mean, it's great open source work that. Um, uh, I'd be interested in getting involved in, you know, and, and you know, seeing how we can how we can make it work at, at, at a larger level, but also, you know, start with that architecture and figure out literally from the beginning, you know, where are the gaps? I, I think that the whole combo though between Tecton, uh, Aspire, and, and Sigstore is a really compelling one though. Awesome. Yeah, as, mm -hmm. as we talked through it, one, one other dimension that comes up is thinking of failure modes. Say your dark fiber gets severed uh, to full CO. What is the expected behavior then? Say yeah. Tecton loses connectivity to Spire, like what did you set up your time to lift or yeah. your route got compromised? What if you want to force rotate your route? Uh, we might want to start thinking around help wanted for people to think around failure modes and how to make it like anti-fragile, just and resilient. I think there's a lot of properties in the system on, on the default modes yeah. that will help yeah. mitigate downtime. But yeah, it would be, would be really good to that, make that, sure that's, that's a wrong. But... That, that's a great point. And we, we've been thinking about that too, is that what, what happens if we, we can't act, get access to some of the, those trusted stores or we can't validate some of those signatures and how do you use those, some other way around it? And what are the security implications of the mitigations for that too? Right? And then I guess also in, as well as the sort of failure modes, has anyone threat modeled it and look at, looked at it that it may have already happened? Right? I'm not aware. But... No, but because I, I think that's something I'd be keen on doing is looking at the full end-to-end -end architecture in the very next stage is go in and threat model that to within an inch of its life and then figure out, right, where are the controls we can start to embed on it or, or change maybe some of the engineering uh, assumptions and such just based on that threat model. Uh, that, that's what we're what talking I'm really about is real doing. world. Well, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I think we were talking no. about like a real world scenario. So that fits in perfectly if we're going to, you know, any tool worth the software, right? You want to like bang the crap out of it and see if you know what comes out of it. So as eloquent to as that is, totally. Let's bang the crap out of it as it were, right? So it's uh, yeah, absolutely right. And look at it, look at it at the theoretical level because that's kind of where we're going to take it. But then also run it through the book of. Uh, I mean, the, the CNCF has got the great list of uh, supply chain compromises. Let's take a look and see, you know. It's not quite set up that way, obviously, right? But you know, how, how would we ad adapt to that? Let's run that threat through that threat model and see if we, we would have covered it or not. Yeah. I apologize. I, have, I haven't uh, caught up in some time, but it, it, is, is that where we're at? We've built out that strawman architecture and now we're heading into failure modes and, and threat modeling or we just validating the architecture based on, on the good work already out there. So I, I have a couple of questions because um, I think, you know, uh, looking at the demo, uh, it's like very geared towards sort of like a normal sort of container build. But I think like some of the things uh, that we would still, I think, want to see as part of a reference architecture is, you know, just sort of, I don't know, Java jar, Go binary. Um, and then also, you know, how does that get published to an actual um, artifact repository? And then how would that get deployed in production with a sort of validation that, you know, yes, we have validated the provenance and supply chain. And, you know, um, so that's okay to, to be now run in, in um, production environments. Yeah, definitely. And that's kind of what I meant by like kind of expanding beyond this and like where I think. I could use, we could all use a little bit of help because it's definitely possible to like use the same flow to assign like other artifacts like jars or binaries, but it's not like built in in the same way that the support for the containers is. So that could be, it could be interesting to add that in because it's possible right now, but it's not as convenient to do, I guess. 
Yeah, and and one other thing um, that I think uh, I, I, I'm sure this will come out in in the threat modeling that we do, but I know one of the biggest sort of attack vectors is like the build itself. Like if if it's not necessarily that somebody's coming in from the outside and compromising the container, but the code that you're running, like the actual build itself, is written in such a way that it is building a compromised artifact. Maybe we pulled in source code it, that source code wasn't. Uh, uh, vetted the right way, and then now you have an artifact that's been signed all the right ways because it's still gone through all the right build steps and whatnot. But um, you know uh, that's been compromised. And to be clear, I think there's steps. You know whether it's SAS or DAS scans or whatever can can do that. But I think it's worthwhile kind of you know also really looking at like what is the build step actually doing? Yeah, definitely. So yeah, I'm sure plenty more of ideas are going to come up, and you might already feel overwhelmed with everything we've we've said since you concluded your demo, Priya. But we're very interested and eager of working with you and collaborating. And as Nan pointed out, we might want to get like super crisp and focused, and just like do a project board and pick. Well, we could do fifty things, but we're going to do this three before KubeCon. Uh, I'm sure you're already doing that yourself and like you might want to pick how how do you interact with this group uh, so yeah we will explore how to best work together for sure yeah I, I'll be here one thing I'll add as well is is um, I just put this in the channel I put the the examples of compromises from Andres as well as just the screenshot of the help wanted I would I would think um if you get a moment, if you can actually attach the full deck of what you presented, that'd sure. be fantastic. And then we can basically let's digest this a little bit. And then next time we reconvene, we can figure out exactly like crisp this up and say, okay, here, let's divvy out some tasks after we've, after we've kind of played with this for a little bit as a, as a group. Mm -hmm. Does this make sense, everyone? Yeah. Cool. And if anybody wants like access to the, to the, development cluster I'm using and could definitely give it to you just like message me on slack or if there's like I don't know if there's a group that everyone's part of that I could just kind of stick stick in there or something we're uh are you not in the supply chain uh you're in channel the working group that's I think all oh, of us are in yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so right yeah. there is probably where we're gonna like overwhelm you with a billion questions oops I'm sorry just say hello that type of thing <laughs> sounds great is the development cluster running in GK yeah okay and as for Spire, are you thinking of using like Kubernetes attesters or are you saying like GCP attesters? I think we're using a Kubernetes attester right now, but we don't really want it to be GKE specific. Um, so yeah, so I don't know a whole lot about how Spire is set up. I think Dan did that last night, um, but yeah, definitely not, not definitely cloud agnostic, so. Okay. I think cool. that's probably a, a, a an actual action item at some point is that how do you build your test case to, or your you know test harness, right? So we should probably figure that out as well at some point. So we'll add that as something to think about. Yeah, for since we're using OIDC Federation, I don't know that Spire and GCP OIDC uh, work together today because of the ciphers that are supported. Uh, when we implemented this for AWS, AWS didn't have support for ellipt elliptic curve and jots. And at Spire didn't support Acme search. We did add added Acme search and we had to like fall back on whatever other cipher. Like I think it's just using NARSA uh, right now. But yeah, I think GK support doesn't support like one of the flavors of EDCS. So yeah, we might need to get a little bit creative there just go with like least common denominator for sure cool parting thoughts we can wrap up i guess or like pop like reiterating next steps uh who's owning what uh are we meeting again next week i would see i would assume it would be a full-time uh meeting i just the action i'm putting here is Digest pre a demo and test it, test it. Um, crisp crisp up what what we want to do. And I think next meeting we should probably divvy up tasks since people will be able to play with it a little bit and kind of give their you know, I, it's it's hard being in this nebulous thing without playing with something and understand where you can fit in. This is what my my take. 
John Meadows, are we are we jumping the gun and, and being super tactical here? No, I don't think so. I, I, I think it, if it's the work that I remember seeing before, I think it's I think it's pretty awesome to take a look at, right? I th think it's additional work we can do in parallel, right? Uh, sort of take a look at the the wider architecture, but you know, I think this is good. Right on, awesome. Priya, again, thank you so much. Perfect. Keep up the good work. Yeah, yeah really awesome, everyone. Really cool. Well done. All right. Bye now.